Hello, this is Judy Lavoy. Thank you for joining me for Scratchboard Start to Finish. I create my Scratchboard art on a board that's manufactured by a company called Ampersand Art, and it's a rigid hardboard that has a white clay coating covered with a very thin layer of black India ink. By using any kind of abrasive tool, as the ones shown here, I can make marks through the black surface and uncover the white layer below. As you can see, it's an ideal media for creating beautiful textures, especially the fur on animals. I've done scratch boards of many different subjects. Some of them I leave simply in black and white, and on others I've added color. Here's a few examples, and you can see more on my website. For this project, I was inspired by a photo of my cat, and I decided that this would make a fabulous topic with his crazy expression. I decided to take this photo and combine it with two others to make it look as if Jethro was taking a selfie of himself. Initially, I used this photo simply to create a photo transfer for a workshop that I was doing showing the different ways that you can use the surface called clayboard. But then I was searching for a unique subject in order to create a new scratchboard painting. So I decided to use the same composition of three photos and to create a scratch board on a six inch by six inch square panel. As usual, I started my work by tracing my layout with a piece of graphite paper directly onto the black surface. Some people use a white graphite paper, but I find that this leaves a little bit too much white powdery coating on the surface. And I can see the lines just fine by using the black graphite paper. I also decided in this instance that I wanted to preserve some areas, the cat and the outline of the phone, so that it would be easy for me to do the background first. So I used something that's often used for airbrush. It's a thin, clear layer of film, almost like contact paper, but even thinner. And I applied it to the whole six by six square surface, and then I cut away the areas that I was going to work on first. So here you can see that I've started creating the background. I decided instead of using the gravel background from my original photograph that I'd make something a little bit softer, looking like a sheepskin throw that the cat is laying on. To create this texture I used a fiber brush, which is little uh, fiberglass textured uh, hairs and by rubbing this on the surface it removes some of that black coating in a rather soft manner. It releases an awful lot of residue as you remove this black surface. So here I'm showing how I actually lay it on an old file folder so that way the black residue can be collected and I can brush it away with the little brush also shown on the bottom right and not make a big mess while I'm working. You can also see on the black surface itself how I've been able to rub along the edges and that frisket film is protecting the image of the phone as well as the image of the cat. So it gave me a little bit more freedom in working the background textures. Here I've pretty much finished the background, trying to vary the amount of black that I've removed to create a look of folds in the surface of that soft sheepskin. Now that I've done the background, I'm ready to start working on the cat himself. So I made some cuts into the frisket film enabling me to remove it from the area of the cat but leave it to protect 
the phone image further. I've started using an etching tool shown in this image, which is pointed on each end, and it makes a nice thin mark into the black surface of the scratch board. When I'm creating the look of fur, I make my motion with the scratching tool in the direction in which the fur grows. So here I've continued to do more of the fur. The more scratching, the more black gets removed. Now it's time to start the face. I used a slightly different technique for Jethro's eyes called stippling, where instead of scratching short lines, you create a lot of little dots near each other, and that removes most of the black area. You don't have to scratch hard to get through the black surface. In fact, if you run your finger across the board that you've worked on, you shouldn't even really feel the indentations of any kind of lines or marks that you've made. My work continued on Jethro's face. And I finished up by doing that all-important teeth and tongue where the emphasis is really going to be when people look at my finished artwork. More scratching created the paw with a little shadow left to make it look like it's on the top side of the phone. And the paw is a little bit closer so you can see that the first strokes are a little bit longer and a little bit broader. I removed the frisket from the phone area and I used my various scratching tools to etch in the details. This was one of the hardest parts because those symbols on the top of the screen are so precise and so small. When I add color to my black scratch boards, I sometimes use watercolor paints and I often use these paints that are specifically made for scratch board and they're called scratch board inks. They come in a set with these six colors and so I can mix a variety of different shades. Also, the other advantage of these inks is they don't leave any residue on the unscratched black surface as some other coloring medium might do and actually does do. So here you can see how I've mixed some soft pinks for the background in order to accent the tongue and the nose of the cat. I've made his beautiful yellow eyes and then scratched in some highlights to make them look really wet and realistic. I've added some very light strokes of browns and grays in the fur. And then I've added the yellow and the green in the details on the phone. So here it is, Silly Selfie, my scratchboard art of cute little Jethro.